Welcome back. <clears throat> Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode where I critique your designs. I really love doing these. It's a way of me giving back a little bit, showing you my appreciation for you guys watching my videos. We got a massive stack of submissions to get through without wasting any more time. Classes in session. <laughs> Now our first submission is from Aran Levying. Aran is seven years old. Wow, is that 70 or seven? Seven years old. Aran, we've got a star in our hands here. Aran, either you're a superstar or you're one in the making already. So Aran has submitted quite a few sketches. The one I'm gonna settle on to critique for you, Aran, is the Maserati MC12. Lo and behold, Total coincidence, I'm wearing an MC12 shirt. This is an exclusive look at one of the first official Frank Stevenson merch t-shirts, one of many that will be coming out very soon. Aran, first of all, I'm absolutely blown away that you have been able to do a sketch like this. I hope you're being honest because if you are, this is commendable. I don't even know if at seven years old I knew which side of the pencil to use but you've done something here that is nothing short of being a designer in the making at any rate there's always improvement and i can see some things on here that easily could turn it into something even more impressionable so the first thing when you design is try to get the space between the two wheels pretty accurate we typically go about three and a half on a good sized car. On a car like the MC12, I would probably push it to about four wheels in distance. And now you have to realize you're working in perspective. So those aren't circles. They're going to be ellipses. Typically the first ellipse is a little bit more open, a little bit wider than the ellipse in the back, not the other way around. So you've got it reversed here. What you have is a smaller sized ellipse, not overall length, but from width to width than you have in the back. So that's your first mistake. Now, not to criticize it obviously, but watch what I do to your drawing. You're gonna have some perspective built in in all directions. So as you go that way and that way, they will end up at a vanishing point here. And you will also end up the vanishing point over here somewhere. So all your lines are gonna be going that way and that way, depends on which axis they are. Now that axis that you're running through there, through the middle of the wheel, is what we call the minor axis of the ellipse and the tall axis going the long way is called the major axis those two axes are always at right angles to each other right so when i find the minor axis or determine the minor axis the major axis is 90 degrees 90 degrees to that 90 degrees and so the highest point of the ellipse is on that point and the lowest point is there, 90 degrees, remember that. Now in the rear, you see the problem here? Your axis is going that way and that way. If I write, draw a right angle of the minor and the major, that wheel is kicked out in the wrong direction. You need, again, to set up the ellipse on that. Now you wanna run, again, a right angle to the minor axis, which means that your ellipse is going to be more like that. And that gives you the feeling that the car is now set up properly in terms of having the wheels in perspective. Every other line you have on here is pretty good. You've taken the top off the MC12, which shows that you're aware of a little known fact that the MC12 is actually a target top. You can take the top off. So good on you for knowing that. You're probably a, a, a car freak already. You want to introduce your lines on the side with a little bit of curvature, not so straight like you have, because that shows that the body side is curling in as it goes up and it's curling slightly inwards as it goes down. So those section lines will help you to understand that. Then never forget Aran, please. I repeat it all the time. I don't get tired of repeating it, but it's just a fact. Plant the car on the ground, put a shadow underneath it that makes it sit and does it look like it's floating in space? You're designing a car, 
not an airplane. And then around with your lines, the way you're drawing, I like that you're being very sketchy with it. I can see that you put a few lines down. All you have to do now is take one of those lines and darken it. And when you darken it, the other lines will tend to disappear. They don't actually disappear, but your eye will only read the darkest line that you put down. So pick one of the lines that you think is the most accurate representation of the correct line and darken it a little bit. So you already have the talent to put the lines more or less in the correct area and you have a feel for it. So just now give some darkness and lightness to your lines. That's called line quality. All in all, Aran, you are a protege. Hit me up in 10 years time. When you're looking for a job, I'll be there, hopefully. And on to the next one. <laughs> The next one is from Paul, Paul McMahon. Paul's 35, he's from Ireland, and he has a background in product design. He would love some tips on how to break free from the limitations of current technology. Wouldn't we all? That's the million dollar question. Breaking free from the limitations of current technology, that's actually what they pay you to do. You have to have the idea. I could bottle it and sell it and be a quite, quite well off person, but um, I can't, unless you push your design boundaries further than what is allowed, you'll never be able to innovate. So innovation is all about breaking the rules and then finding a way to make it work. Now, being a product designer, I can see that you have some talent, some, some sketch talent, some idea about form. You have some good ideas about how to represent volume and shapes. So that's working well on a first impression. Let's just start from the basics. So what you have here is a great three quarter view and a nice side view. I would hope that you design the side view first as a ideation. It's just letting your mind spill out some ideas on the page and it gives you sort of a basic reference for what the overall design could look like. It's actually quite a nice little quick sketch that you've done there and you capture the essence, which is important with a sketch. I think you've done a great job with your shading. I can read what's going on here. And now it's translating this to a 3D perspective viewing, and that's where it gets tough. Now I know you're probably thinking that you've done an amazing job, and I wouldn't knock it either, but it's not amazing in the sense that if you look at it from a, let's call it a designer's experienced eye, there are a few things that you would want to tweak on this to give it, let's say the professional car designer touch. Remember this, Paul, it's never a bad idea to overemphasize the width of a car. It is a bad idea to make the car too narrow. So I would always almost tend to exaggerate the width of the car in your sketch. So that means that you could potentially pull the car out a little bit wider than you have here. Your curvature on your base of your windscreen is not too bad, but the top curve is absolutely uh, not good. You have to remember that these two curves here relate to each other. Otherwise you're gonna find an enormous amount of twist and, and warping to the glass. You can't actually produce glass that way. So the top line and the bottom line of the glass are almost just like typically almost a carbon copy of each other, but in some other cases, some instances, you can go a little bit flatter on the top. What you don't want to do is make more curvature on the top than you do on the bottom. So try to remember that. And so if I sketch in, say, a new line, I would probably push it a little bit more like that. Oops, a little bit more like that, and then bring it out so it's a little bit wider. Remember that if you run a center line through your sketches, that's always going to help you to get a bit of feeling of the volume of the car, where your center of the car is. So push it out a little bit like that. This line will probably be more over in that area there, and that will determine more or less the width of the roof. As you come back, you've got everything pretty much going well there, but the car looks in this sketch much, much shorter than there. So what you would have to do, if you look at the distance you have from here to here and there to there, you would want to push the rear wheel further back. Now, if you do that, you'd have to take the center line here and here and extend it along that axis. So I'm just gonna draw a line through there like that. 
and along that is where the center line of the rear wheel will be. So I'm just gonna push it back a little bit. So back in there. You still want the bottom of the wheel to be about there. So we're talking there. The center, the, the minor axis is going there. So I wanna line it up at 90 degrees through there. So now that is where the rear of the car potentially could be better to relate to your little thumbnail sketch. And then that shifts everything. So now we're talking about something that is perhaps about that far back instead of that far back. So now you're, what you're doing is adding meat, adding volume to the car to make it look like it's got more presence and more dynamic on the, on, on the paper itself, on the 2D drawing. When you scrunch it up and push it into a little mass there, it's gonna look like that. And that's not a good look. You want to actually have presence on the page. You can just see what I'm gonna first show you here, Paul, is that the car needs to be a little bit wider and a little bit longer than you're showing in your sketch, okay? So your perspective lines are pretty much correct. It just takes a little bit more filling out the volume such that you get more of the car, showing more of the car, more presence on the page. It's an interesting design. It's a little bit Stratos-like. You know, there's some cars, Koenigseggs, that kind of have that feeling like you've got through here, which is always a good thing. It's an interesting look. If you look at the amount of distance you have from the rear of the wheel to your door shut line in this view, and here you only have that much, that's a little bit off. So you're gonna want perhaps to pull the front wheel even further, further forward. So you're gonna do that. That'll give you the space here to get very close to the proportions you have here. So your wheel base on this drawing is very small, very tight, and you'll want to stretch it that way. To, again, to increase the space of the car, the amount of space it has, the presence it has, that distance there to there is much, much larger than the distance you're showing from here to here. Again, expand that wheelbase. I, I like how you're trying to show the volume of the fender here, Paul, but what I would do to, uh, to even make it more believable, at least when you're sketching it out, which is a good help for any young designer, is to put what we call section lines on the vehicle. That helps you to understand what you're trying to achieve. It helps anybody who's reviewing your design to, to understand. And you wouldn't put them on a rendering, but you would definitely put them on a hand sketch like this. And that section line basically follows if you cut a slice through the surface, it shows you pretty much what that section would do if it was running the line through it. So something like that will start to make it very easy to comprehend the amount of curvature, the kind of shape that you're talking about when you're actually designing the vehicle. So it's not cheating, it's actually quite advantageous and a good thing. The rendering later when you add the shading, the color, that by itself will show the amount of curvature. But when you're doing a sketch like this, have fun, show the curvature. It helps to explain how much angle, how much fullness, how much sensuality you're putting into the surface. So Paul, hope this has been a little bit of assistance to you. Hope it helps you set up your next drawings a little bit better to understand the importance of presence of the car, to understand that your side view typically is what you're trying to generate as a feeling for the 3D sketch, for the three quarter sketch as we call it, and that should guide you. So remember that when you space things in your side view sketch, that should translate very easily, very well, very exact almost to your three quarter sketch. And then that car becomes the same as the one that you started out with the theme development. Thanks so much, Paul. And now we're gonna move to the next one, which is, Emanuela Martella. Now I'm looking at your first design and this looks quite like a mix of different cars. In general, what I'm looking at here is a hypercar. Now, this is quite interesting here because what you've done is the perfect drawing for a coloring book, Emanuel. What I mean by that is you've outlined just about everything that needs to be understood here. This sketch, although it is very accurate, perhaps done as an 
using an underlay, which means a car that exists is underneath and you're using the lines underneath to translate that. That is good in your first week of learning how to draw a car. After the first week, you have to start getting used to the feeling of drawing your own designs, your own sketches, perhaps copying another sketch that you see on the side, but not putting your drawing on top or your blank drawing or your blank piece of paper on top of an existing drawing. It doesn't train you. It doesn't fire off the synapses, the, the, the wiring that you need to be able to do it yourself. So if you're going to copy an existing car design, put it to the side, then draw it looking at that car design next to you. Don't draw on top overlay in the existing design. Next step, like I said, start to get like a designer and use lines like this. You can see that my lines are a little bit longer, a little bit more life to them. This is the way a designer draws like this, not drawing very accurate, strong, single lines. Typically when you're starting out, you're losing the confidence of being able to put a line exactly where you want it. We all have that problem. Hold the pen further back, not at the front. This will make it feel like it's a, a, a brush almost. You're painting lines on, you're not drawing so much. And then avoid making small little lines like that. That is absolutely not professional. You want sweeping lines, not short bitty lines like that. Like that is much better. And see how the line gets faded out. See how the line's a little bit stronger there. But your lines, as you get better, will start to flow, start to make more sense, and you can start to read the sketch a little bit better. So again, none of these lines are absolutely 100% accurate. That's later you can tighten the lines up. Remember today's lesson is right angles between the major axis and the minor axis of the ellipse. That right angle will help you to put the high point and low point of the ellipse and the narrow points of the ellipse. So that will be symmetrical. This curve will be symmetrical to that one, as well as this one, as well as that one, okay? So ellipses are not oval, they're symmetrical left to right, and they're symmetrical from bottom to top, okay? Once you get to that stage where you have lines that are sort of flowing like that, Emmanuel, what you do then want to do is make it start to have a little bit of color to it. Now, it's hard to learn color because it's a long process, but what, one easy way that you can do it is to understand that glass typically has a tint to it, which means it's a little bit darker than being transparent or see-through in a clear condition. So if you want to make the drawing start to come alive, you can start to put a little bit of shading on the glass. So start simply, Manuel, by giving a little bit of shading. Now, I'm doing it with a big pen. I work most often with a big pen because I can control it fairly well. And again, I'm just being extremely rough and unworried about what I'm doing here. But this is just gonna give me the first impression of adding a little bit of darkness, a little bit of contrast to the actual glass area so it sets it apart from the body of the car itself. And the other area that you would want in Manuel to add a little bit of darkness to it to set the car off is you can add some darkness where the tires are and around the tires. This is the area where the wheel well is and it casts darkness also, even more darkness onto the tire itself. But that separates the tires from the body itself. If you're going to put any color on, that's perhaps one of the first areas that you should understand is putting a little bit of darkness between the spokes that will make the spokes come off. It's all about contrast. And always, 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 Emmanuel, even when you're doing a sketch, put a shadow underneath the car. I sound like a parrot, I know, but it's very important to make the car have a shadow. Study in some of the sketches that you can find on Coraflot, you can find them on Behance, a lot of the sketch sites, you want to see how they draw, how they shape the shadows underneath the car, right? So the shadow underneath the car plants it, you can start dark in the front, like I said, this part very dark, and then as it goes away, it gets lighter and lighter. The darkness here can be lighter than the darkness that's closer to you. Everything that goes away gets a little bit lighter and a little bit fainter. 
Try that, Emmanuel. Loosen up with your lines. Use your arm when you're sketching. Don't just sit very close and draw and trace like that. And don't do this for heaven's sake. That is not sketching. That's, I don't know what that is. Chicken scratch. Perhaps designers draw like that. Okay, just light, light. Let your wrist do all the work. Sometimes don't even try to concentrate exactly on what you're sketching. You know more or less where you're supposed to be. Just put in light lines like that. Eventually the sketch will start to show you its car. It will let go and you will see what's coming out. And then you can start to accentuate the lines that you really, really do like. So, great. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you for submitting your work. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. I hope this has been a little bit of service for you. Mostly the budding designers will be interested in this because the more advanced designers will already covered a lot of this ground and are off to becoming, you know, absolutely top of the top in their game. But for those guys, those young guys willing to become designers or even wanting to design cars, even if you're not that young, this type of information is what I would call the groundwork. Once you have that, like anything you do in life is necessary to understand and to be able to do well. Once you've got that out of the way, then it's an open road and you can really step on the accelerator and become as wild and as creative and as good as you want. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.